One of the unavoidable challenges for clients at the moment is is Brexit. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market because of Brexit, and and that manifests itself in in several different ways. Companies thinking about, you know, do they have the right uh, company structure in place uh, for a, a post Brexit environment? What is the impact on their banking relationships? Um, and it takes up a huge amount of of time. And and the frustrating thing is there's no clear answers. And you know, frankly, anyone that sits down at any bank that tells a corporate treasurer that they know exactly what Brexit is going to be and what they're going to need to do in order to be ready for Brexit is, is not good advice. You know, and really what, we, what we've been doing is working very, very closely to explain what we understand at this point in time uh, and then think through from a scenario perspective what, what the different options and different flavors could look like and what the advice would be for each one of those scenarios. So it's about being at planning and being ready, you know, and hopefully we will, uh, we will see in October uh, that the transition period is agreed and we'll move into that transition period. And, and during that time, we'll continue. I think we'll have more information, but we'll be able to continue to, to guide clients in terms of the, the true impacts of, of Brexit. So that's taking up a lot of time. Um, at the same time, um, I think cost uh, and efficiency is, is a key theme within Treasury. Um, I, I don't think you will find a corporate treasury anywhere in the world that says they've got all of the staff that they need and they've got all of the people that they need to be able to fully do everything they would like to do uh, from a treasury remit. And you know, the challenge with that is, yes, the, the day job gets done, but that value add that, that we're constantly talking about and treasurers are constantly talking about is, is harder to achieve if you don't have the right uh, resourcing in place. So anything that you can do to drive efficiency, uh, and whether that's through automation, whether that's through uh, deploying new technology such as robotics or um, artificial intelligence, you know, all of these can help make the treasury more efficient, free up resource, and allow that treasurer, uh, the treasurer to focus on those value-added uh, activities. And then I think uh, there's, there is a focus as well on open banking, particularly from a European perspective. And this is something that we've never seen before, this approach where uh, in it, it, probably the simplest way of thinking about it is traditionally whoever, whichever institution held the bank accounts also provide the services linked to those banks, bank accounts. And PSD2 essentially can disintermediate those two where the banks have to open up their infrastructure to third parties to be able to develop and provide services from those bank accounts. Um, and that gives pause for thought for, for treasurers as well, because there's potentially other ways that they could uh, achieve some of their strategic aims, thinking about different technologies that, 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 uh, or d- different providers that there are in the market. And the final macro topic, I would say, is, is data. When you, you think uh, as a corporate, the, the amount of data that the organization is sitting on, if you can actually get that data into one place, and actually uh, use that data in a more meaningful way, there's a lot that you can uh, achieve. There's huge opportunity there to run a more efficient credit process that means that you can have more appropriate limits and potentially sell more product to some of your key customers. But as we talk about data, there's also a regulatory challenge that comes in the form of GDPR, where we've got to be uh, so much more careful about how we uh, access and store and use data. And this is a key consideration for treasurers and other parts of uh, uh, corporate organizations as well around uh, GDPR and, and remaining compliant. Wherever you're holding data on an EU citizen, for example, GDPR applies, whether that's in the US, in Australia, other parts of Asia. So it, it's global in implication, even though its origins are in Europe. I think Treasury has evolved significantly over the last few years, and particularly post-financial uh, crisis, where um, the core functions of Treasury still carry on day to day. And they haven't changed. They've really not changed. In, in terms of the ability to, to add value and get broader in the organization, um, it takes, uh, I would say, diligence to, to carve out the time and resource to focus on what you can do from an efficiency perspective. Um, And it's only through doing that that you're really going to free up that capacity further down down the line. Within the transaction banking space, nothing much has changed for about 30, 35 years. You know, SWIFT was a big step forward. But since that time, nothing has really changed. 
the core fundamentals haven't really changed at all. Um, but we are now in a period where um, a number of elements are coming together at the same time. You know, an interesting statistic, 93% of all data that exists in the world was created in the last two years. So we're really in this exponential period. And, uh, and I think treasurers have got to ensure they're staying ahead of the curve in this period of great change. You can do that in a number of ways. I think you've got to have the right uh, relationships with the right banks and uh, consulting firms to make sure you're getting the right advice and information. But I, I think you've also got to have the uh, intellectual curiosity um, to stay ahead of this and on top of this yourself as well. And, uh, and I think it's incumbent on all of us in a period of great change to ensure that we have that intellectual curiosity. It's interesting when you look at a bank's position within uh, a client's organization, they're, they're often touching a number of different areas within uh, the client's organization. So I think banks can be very effective at help bringing this whole picture together for, for a treasurer. So that, that's one element where I think banks are having to evolve. But also, I think banks are having to become a lot more advisory than they've been in the past. And when you think of the transaction banking business, it used to just be selling bank accounts and payments and liquidity structures, and it was all very straightforward. These days, it's, it's, much, more, uh, it's much more than that. We're wanting to make our clients' financial lives easier. Um, now, technology can be a big enabler of that. One great example of leveraging technology, um, you know, we recently partnered with uh, a fintech to uh, bring intelligent receivables to market. And, and this is really using artificial intelligence to help companies automate their um, reconciliation processes. And when you look at it, uh, I mean, an extreme example of one of our clients was uh, an automated match rate of 30%. So all of their receivables coming in, only 30% of them were being matched automatically, which meant 70% were being done manually <coughs> across teams of people at great expense and, and a lot of inefficiency. Leveraging this type of technology, uh, we've managed to help companies take that from 30, 40% up to 70, 80, 90% automated match rate. And the impact of that is, uh, is felt actually throughout the organization. Not only does it make the client more efficient and they can basically redeploy those resources to more value added functions, um, but also, um, if you're applying cash quicker, you're also helping the credit teams within the client's organization who potentially, if they've hit a credit limit with a client and they can't sell any more until that client settles the previous invoice, well, if you're matching and post posting that cash quicker, you're actually freeing up capacity for the sales team to go and sell more to that client. So I think um, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunity to deploy technology to, uh, to make our clients' lives easier.